It's America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back. We're talking about peptides and all sorts of things in the uh, nutrition space and the supplement space. And I know a lot of people hear about this, right? We've had a couple of doctors on talking about peptides, talking about different ways to supplement your health. And one of the things that keeps coming up is a lot of people going, I don't know what that is. Is that like, is that like hormone replacement? Is that all the same? I think there's a lot of uh, questions that people want to ask, and we're going to get the answers to those. Plus, afterwards, you guys get to call in and talk to me, 833-482-5337, 833-4VALDES. But first, I want to bring in somebody who is the CEO of Endless Vitality. Jim Nance is with us. Jim, welcome, brother. Thanks for having me, man. It's great to meet you. You bet. Likewise. Pleasure being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys coming to the city. I know you guys are in beautiful uh, Arizona. That's right. Where it's 110 degrees at night. <laughs> it does get up there, man. Yeah. It's is a little it, does hot. it feel cool here in the city? It does. It feels great. You know, the humidity is the biggest difference because in uh, in AZ 105 actually doesn't feel too bad when yeah. you have no humidity, but you start pushing 90. 80% humidity, you feel it. They call this un verano en Nueva York, right? Uh, it's a New York <laughs> summer. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this stuff. Uh, obviously, you're, you're in the game. You're the boss here. Uh, tell a little bit, the audience a little bit about your background, how you got into this stuff, yeah. and, and why you think it's important. Well, I've got a background in finance, actually. I went to Indiana University Business School. I was a mortgage banker for 25 years. About eight years ago, I partnered up with a doctor after going to a clinic that does similar things. Uh, for hormone replacement therapy. So I went and got labs done, found out I was low, had a bunch of my friends that kind of did the same thing. So we went in and um, had the adjustments and I realized really quick the difference it makes you feel completely different. Head clears up, your body changes, ability to put on muscle mass. Um, it also drives your mental acuity, focus, and motivation. So you get a lot from HRT, especially if you have a deficiency. And then um, over the last, I would say, six or seven years, you've had the emergence of peptides. So the number one selling pharmaceutical in the history of pharmaceuticals are GLP-1s or semaglutide, terzepatide. Mm -hmm. so that's what everybody's uh, using. That's what everyone's weight, using like to get Ozempic skinny. And the other brands. Right. So what it does is it causes an insulin release. So your body processes the sugar out of your bloodstream prior to it turning into fat. And at the same time, clicking off a hunger switch. So now you're not hungry, you're not putting on fat, and then you end up just kind of shrinking. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a lot of people love it. Hollywood is going to town with this. Yeah. Now, Jim Nance, uh, I want to go back to, to something you said earlier. Um, you went for your own initial uh, hormone checkup and whatnot, made some adjustments. Um, that's cool. How did... How did um, I guess uh, the number one thing I hear a lot of people complain about is mental fog after 40. They're just like, I might feel tired. My right. knee hurts. I can't think clearly. Uh, how does that work in that regard? Well, testosterone by itself will definitely clear up brain fog if that's an issue for you. And there are peptides, which we're going to get into, that are specific to that as well that help as nootropics. They uh, help with the synapse in your brain, so it helps your your brain just function better, helps with verbal fluency, mental fatigue. So after a long day, you know, if you're feeling a little bit low or let's say, um, you know, some people will have trouble just remembering common words or people's names. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that snaps back into place when your hormones are balanced properly or, you know, if you use a peptide to supplement that. Let's, uh, let's get into that a little bit because I know a lot of people... Um, they hear things and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. But they, they don't want to take anything uh, extra. They don't want to take um, uh, for fear of taking extra medicine or over medicating. Sure. Right. And I think a lot of people, um, for example, I'll give you an example. Me, I like chiropractic. Uh, if I could go to the chiropractor every day, I would. Yeah. Uh, can't afford it. So I don't go. Right? I don't own a chiropractor. But I, I wish I did. And I once had insurance that let me go like three or four days a week. And that was fantastic. I, w I felt yeah. my best when uh, every day I got an adjustment. So uh, I think that what I learned in receiving chiropractic care was that medical doctors aren't big fans. The American Medical Association doesn't promote chiropractic. They think it's right. quackery. Uh, and I wonder, is it the same way with peptides and HRT? Is that the reason why a lot of doctors yeah. don't get involved? So peptides are an emerging market. A lot of people don't understand what they are and how they work. And when, you have a, when you're a medical doctor, you're taught that you 
give this pharmaceutical for this symptom, right? But they don't typically treat the underlying cause mm-hmm. of the problem. So that's where we come to play. I tell people, if, you, if you're sick, go to a doctor. You want to stay healthy, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great line. <laughs> you know. So, so, the, so a peptide is basically just an amino acid chain lower mm-hmm. than 40. Above 40 is considered a protein. So these peptides augment your health either by replicating something that your body makes naturally or causing your body to do things like produce more human growth hormone or repair, recover, um, add more energy, things like that. So a very popular peptide, and you'll hear more about this, is NAD+. So it pushes your mitochondrial function. So as we get older, our body makes less energy, less ATP. So what you can do is you can supplement NAD with a precursor being NMN, but that will simply cause your body to, to, to spit out more energy out of your mitochondria, which these is These like are all battery. letters to me. What, what, yeah. what do these things specifically do? Like, what's the benefit? So NAD will make more energy or ATP. So your body takes food, um, turns it into glucose, and then it goes through a process, and eventually you get energy, and that energy is what drives your cells to function properly. As we get older, those energy levels fall off, and it's partially because our body just doesn't do of a job making things like ATB, ATP or HGH. Um, what do you say to the, the people that say, if my body's not making it anymore, then maybe I, I shouldn't be having it? Well, you can uh, grow old and be the old guy in the wheelchair, or it's like you've got a classic car, but you're low on fuel. Right. So do you not go to the gas station? No, you want to get more gas. You want to run properly. And the same with your hormones. So as we get older, our testosterone falls off. There's a lot of things in the environment, like what we eat, things in the air, microplastics in water that cause our testosterone levels to drop. In fact, over the last 30 years, it's dropped like 1% nationally across the country. Is that because of Biden? For men in general. It's <laughs> well, you know, I would say it's because of some of the policies, maybe. But a lot of it's the microplastics in the water, I think, and the sedentary lifestyle, a lot of screen time. What, what what benefit do you think uh, some of the policies that Secretary Kennedy is putting forward? He's a very fit guy for 70 years old. Yeah. Uh, these uh, He's put a lot of policy. I think every week there's a new company saying we're not going to use uh, uh, food dyes and artificial flavoring. Uh, do you think that's going to benefit uh, some of the work that you do? Absolutely. And one of the biggest things that the Biden administration did that really hurt our industry was categorize some of the peptides into a category called Category 2 where they say, the benefits don't weigh possible side effects, so they don't understand it enough. Mm. So they took a bunch of the peptides that actually are naturally occurring and put them in this Category 2 class. Now, one that's kind of stuck there is called BPC-157. It's a gastric juice. Your body makes it naturally, but when you inject it, it feathers through your body, finds injury, creates a process called angiogenesis or the formation of blood vessels, but it's a huge anti-inflammatory too. Mm. So a lot of the big problems we have is because we're, we're inflamed, again, from the food, the water, and, and lifestyle are just getting older. And Give me a, an out. example of a couple of these inflammatory problems. So let's say uh, you're a workout fanatic. You, you went and run. You wake up. Both your knees hurt. You uh, hurt your shoulder a little bit, and now you can't get comfortable and you can't sleep well at night. Right. So these will can repair joints, muscles, and push out that inflammation to make you feel like you didn't just have the issue that you just had. So if you want to be fit, you want to stay on top of everything, you know, you want to be able to continue to get those workouts you've been getting. But if you got to take two or three days off because your knees hurt, then you're not going to be able to progress the way you'd like to. What happened to you that sparked all of this? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, the health issue that I had was really due to, to blood pressure and stress. So I was both working as a mortgage banker as well as running the clinic. Well, yeah. had a very stressful day, had a marketing guy take me for some money. I was extremely upset. I get home and I finally got some blood pressure meds. Ironically, the, the day that I had the biggest issue, but I was sitting in my table at home and it felt like I got shot in the head. It was like, bam. So I really didn't know what to do. So I was like, you know what? This hurts so bad. I'm just going to drive myself to the hospital, right? So I drive myself, wreck my car about halfway to the hospital. Luckily, my stepsister lived fairly close. So she came and picked me up, took me wow. to the hospital. I get there and they're like, well, um, we need to medevac you downtown. Um, you have an issue. We got to take care of it immediately. And I'm like, well, she can drive me. Like, we're 10 minutes away. They're like, uh, if you don't get in the helicopter, you're going to die. I'm like, wow. 
bring around the chopper. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they put me in a gurney, came in, put me down immediately. I had, um, had a brain bleed, so hemorrhagic stroke in the frontal lobe. They, um, yeah, so they, they did the original surgery. I woke up unbeknownst to myself and I pulled the drain out. I don't remember doing this, so they put me back down again. Wow. Then I woke up the second time in handcuffs, ankles cuffed to the bed, catheter in, and I'm completely scrambled, bro. I have no idea where I'm at, how I got there, freaking out. I'm trying to pull myself up, but I'm literally chained to the bed. So I'm screaming at these poor nurses, and one of them has an Eastern European accent. So my mind makes up this whole backstory that I've been kidnapped, and I think I'm being <laughs> organ harvested. Now I think I'm in Russia, seriously, because all the Ukraine-Russia stuff yeah, was yeah, going down. Unbelievable. So uh, they come up, they trank me. They take me back to ICU, and I spent two weeks in ICU, and I didn't, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, and I had diabetes septus, so I was peeing out three times the water I was taking in, so they wouldn't let me drink anything anymore either. Wow. So I sat in there, and I just kind of reevaluated my whole life, man. You know, it was, uh, it was definitely one of those turning points, and my, uh, my beautiful now wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, had to make a game-time decision to say, hey, well, am I going to stick it out with this guy? Because... What I didn't know is I had a 25% chance of living. Wow. And of those people, about 65% of those have, like, major issues. You've seen stroke victims, man. Yeah. Like they're dragging a leg or half their face doesn't work, whatever what, the case may be. Was this related to cardiovascular blood, disease? High blood pressure. And then I, you know, I had thought that it had something to do with my heart, and I had my heart checked, and my heart was fine. So I was like, I'm not going to worry about it. Well, come to find out, it puts a lot of stress on, stress on your vascular system, so it just... Happened to be that day where too much time and pressure and wow. boom, yeah. So uh, so I'm in there, and they also find that I have a small meningioma or a, like a small tumor in my head as well. But they're like, well, as long as um, nothing, you don't, you don't notice anything, don't worry about it. A lot of people have it. Well, about fast forward six months, and the thing grew over my optical nerve. So Good I woke see. up one morning and my left eye wouldn't look all the way left. So I lost my lateral gaze, wow. which I in turn lost my three depth, 3D perception of everything. So now I'm like stepping off curbs and blah, blah, blah. So I go back in and I thought it was latency from the stroke. I thought I was having an issue with the stroke. They're like, no, your optical nerve now has a tumor that's grown over it and you're gonna need an additional surgery. So I'm like, great, another brain surgery, right? So I'd actually had the first surgery happen in the, the uh, tube installed, reinstalled. And then when I got home, I had a CSF leak. So when they took it out, it kept, it just didn't heal right. So now I've got like pink lemonade coming down my forehead. So I had to go back in for another surgery to have that thing taken care of. Then uh, prior to the, um, prior to having the 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 brain tumor I had my nose rebuilt because that was a part of the problem with my blood pressure so I've already had so now I've had a rhinoplasty septoplasty uvulectomy to rebuild my nose I got hit in the face with a trash can in college being in my rowdier days you know being <laughs> stupid <laughs> and that caused high blood pressure and I caused high blood pressure wow so they fixed that then I had the uh, the brain tumor removed at Mayo which they did a great job. But when I got up from the surgery, it wasn't completely healed, so I had to have radiation um, to try to shrink the tumor to bring that back into check. But so what I'm kind of getting is I learned over the last three years really how to repair myself with peptides. So a lot of the things I offer, I have a personal experience with because I went through a lot to get where I'm at. And, you know, if, you're, if you know the clinical side, that's one thing. But if I can speak to you on you know, what they do, how they did it, and, or how it works, and how it affected me, and, right. you know, it's, it's a lot more powerful. What's some of the stuff that you, you personally used and benefited from? So, I would say uh, the BPC-157 was, was big on the healing piece of it. Um, I use Dihexa and Cerebrolicin, so the Dihexa is a nootropic, so that helps speed my brain back up, but the Cerebrolicin can actually regrow brain cells, which... You know, you're taught in high school you can't grow those back, but you actually can. So those help with my cognitive function. I did a uh, event with the NFL Alumni Association where I had doctors from all over the country come in, and actually one from internationally brought a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So I took that, had that for a year, which I don't know if you know anything about hyperbarics, but, man, it's just amazing because it puts you under pressure. Oxygen under pressure gets smaller. 
Now you can have five to ten times the oxygenation, which a smaller molecule can break the blood-brain barrier. Wow. So it heals your brain, heals your body, and also helps stave off aging. So your chromosomes have, or have uh, telomeres that get smaller every time they replicate. And this can extend those, so it can extend your cellular life. So when that telomere is gone, you're gone. But most people die of, like, you know, chronic illness. You have a heart attack or you get hit by a bus or, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> So, Jim, if people are listening and they're like, man, this alphabet soup he's talking about sounds great. I want to yeah. get some of that. What do they do? What's the process? So you go to EndlessVitality.com. We've got a medical history form there that you'd fill out. Then we schedule a consult and labs typically. So that's probably the most important piece of this as you get blood work done. Then you get kind of a feel of what you got going on from the inside out. Um, the doctor goes over that with you, um, goes over any deficiencies. Then we makes recommendations for treatment. Then the doctors give us a plan of care to administer the medication and then regular follow-up. And if, you, if you're in Arizona, we have a uh, kind of like a DEXA scale. We do a full body composition. So when you come in, and I always challenge people to beat me on the scale, you know what I mean? Because I've got a metabolic age of 37, but I'm 50 because of things like NAD, hyperbarics. Another one, methylene blue, kind of does the same thing, pushes out more ATP. But there's all these little things you can do. And these are, you know, kind of stackable habits, and that's what we talk to people about. So I talk to people a lot of things about a lot of things we don't even sell, like grounding, for example. You get a grounding mat, you sleep on it. Um, Gary Breck yeah, has got a Somebody, three people in the last products. two yeah. months have told me about these grounding blankets. Yeah. So, you know, the Earth puts off a charge, which that charge um, helps your chromosomes build energy, and that's a big part of it is we get older we make less energy and you get you know your, your body just falls apart so if you can keep up on these things these stackable habits like staying hydrated um, detoxifying yourself so I gotta do five days a week in the sauna first thing in the morning have a big glass of water with electrolytes these Baja uh, Baja gold salt so traditional table salt has a lot of rocks and glass in it which inflames your blood vessels and that's why people get high blood pressure mm. a lot of times because of the salt to so use a different salt that lowers your blood pressure right so this is this is one of these big uh you know misconceptions that salt's bad for you but you you need you need salt just not that table salt the crap everyone tries salt to give of you. the earth salt Jim of the Nance. Earth. <laughs> if you want to learn more check him out at endlessvitality.com